Okay. Good day, everyone. So, uh, we'll just continue our discussion with our semiconductor devices. So, last uh, video, I have shown to you how the silicon uh, atom became one of our very common semiconductor device for our, you know, electronics and how it helped our um, world of electronics today. So, right now, I'm going to uh, continue the discussion by introducing another atom that can be found also in our periodic table of elements, what happens to our uh, silicon material if we're going to introduce another uh, atom? So, in our silicon, last time, so uh, I have discussed to you that our silicon has four valence electrons in its outermost shell. So, right now, we're going to study what happens to our silicon material if we're going to introduce a phosphorus atom. So from here, we have here a phosphorus atom wherein its valence electron is composed of five free electrons. So let's take a look at that. Phosphorus in atomic number 15, the periodic table. It has 15 protons and 15 electrons and five of these electrons are in its outer shell. And these five electrons are available for its conduction. So let's take now. So we have here our plain uh, silicon material. So you have here silicon. Okay. As what I have discussed to you, it has four valence electrons. And let's see if we replace this silicon atom here into the phosphor. I mean, we replace this silicon atom with phosphorus. Okay. So let's see, replace that with phosphorus. And as what we can observe, it also has these shared electrons. Okay. But take note, since it has five valence electrons, you have one free remaining electron that is very available for conduction. So let's now try to observe what happens to our bare silicon material if we replace some of silicon atoms with phosphorus atoms. Okay. That is what you call actually doping. Okay, doping means one silicon material or one uh, one type of material. You introduce them with a an, with an, another phosphor with another what they call this with another material with another atoms. So in this case, we're going to dope our silicon material with phosphorus. Okay. So relying on our heat for conduction does not make for reliable electronics, okay? Suppose we remove a silicon atom from this crystal lattice, okay? Let's replace this silicon with phosphorus atom, okay? And then let's try to remove another silicon and replace with another phosphorus, okay? What do we observe? So in, in our silicon bear, Okay, if we have a heat, these bonds will going to break. Then we have a free electron that is available for conduction. But now, since we doped our silicon material with phosphorus, we now have free electrons. As you can see here, we have free electrons that is very available for conduction. Okay, and let's try to apply a potential difference. And we try to observe, we don't need heat for these bonds to break. But instead, we only need this, um, what they call this, we only need this uh, potential difference for our free electrons to move from one electron to another electron given its electric field. So, so you can again see, applying Coulomb's law, these free electrons here are negatively charged particles. It is being attracted to our positively charged protons okay okay then you have a flow of your current okay and this type of conduction is what you call in extrinsic conduction or your n-type silicon why n-type because our phosphorus it has five free electrons silicon has four so we have one free valence electron available for conduction and that electron is an n-type since it's electron. So when you have free electron, you get their n-type or n, n-type of silicon. Okay, so you have there this n-type 
this type of silicon is called n-type. This is because the majority charged carriers are negative electrons. N, negative. Okay? A small number of minority charged carriers or holes will exist due to electron hole pairs being created in silicon atoms due to the heat. Okay? So from now on, n-type will be shown like this. Okay? So if we have so many more, uh, what they call this, uh, phosphorus being applied into our silicon material, so we'll have so many electrons that is a very available for conduction. Okay, earlier we have five free valence electrons. So let's try to observe also what happens to our silicon material if we're going to dope them with a boron. Okay, so we have the here a boron with an atomic number, okay, five in the periodic table. So let's try to observe what happens to our silicon material or crystal lattice if we introduce boron, if we dope boron into our silicon material. So let's have here, we replace it with boron, okay? What do you see? Okay, one silicon uh, electron does not have any pair of electron from boron, okay? So we now have here a mist electron. So that missed electron will create a hole, okay? So you have here, you have a hole that is available for conduction, okay? So we remove a silicon atom, and then we dope that with boron, and then you have here your hole, okay? Another silicon will be replaced with boron, and then you have here another hole, and then we apply potential difference, and let's try to observe what happens to our hole. It transfers from one bond to another bond. Okay. Earlier, the electrons move from negative to positive. But here in our p-type silicon, intrinsic conduction, we see that the holes being repelled from the positive side of our, uh, what they call this, a positive type of a terminal, and then it's being attracted to the negative side of our terminal. Then a current will flow, this time carried by positive holes. The positive holes move towards the negative terminal, okay, being repelled from the positive terminal. And that is what we call a P-type silicon. P, because you have positively charged particles or positive holes as your majority careers okay so you have that from now on a p-type silicon will be shown like this it is made up of holes okay so now we already have a p-type silicon we already have an n-type silicon let's try to observe if we combine these types of silicon okay that is what we call pn junction so poise rejoin a piece of p-type silicon to a piece of n-type silicon, you have your p-type, and then you have here your n-type, okay? We get what is called a p-n junction. Okay, you have your p-type, and then you have your n-type silicon, okay? Remember, both pieces are electrically neutral since we don't have any, uh, we don't have any, what they call this, any battery being supplied or any supply that is being uh, attached to this p-n junction, okay? We initially joined electrons from the n-type migrate into the p-type, less electron density there, okay? So if we join them together, initially, you have this n-type joining our holes. Do you see that? Okay. When an electron fills a hole, when an electron fills a hole, okay, both the electron and the hole disappear as the gap in the bond is filled, okay? First, you have here the initially, when you join them together, the electron will join our hole, and then they will going to disappear, okay? As you can see in the illustration. Again, bare initially, they join, and then they disappear. And this gap here, okay, 
this gap here where there is no free charge carriers, that is what you call a depletion layer. And then this acts as an insulator. Again, what is an insulator? It does not allow or does not permit the flow of our electrons. Okay? So next, so you have here, okay, the p-type has gained electrons, it is left with an overall negative charge. And an n-type has lost an electron, it is left with an overall positive charge. Okay, since it was a hole earlier and then it left, we have here a negative. And then this was supposedly negative, and then an electron le leave, so we are left now with p. Okay. So therefore, it, there's a voltage across the junction. Okay. This depletion layer here, or the junction voltage for silicon, is approximately 0 0.7 volts. Okay, that is the junction voltage between silicon. Okay, so have that 0 0.7. Okay, let's now take a PN junction, and let's try to observe. The type of biasing in our PN junction, we actually have two. We have reverse bias and we have forward bias. Let's try to observe this uh, PN junction if we're going to apply potential difference. Okay, Apply a voltage across with it, a P-type negative and an N-type positive. Okay, So you have your P-type silicon, N-type silicon, we're going to apply a voltage. Remember this one, the longer length is the positive. This one here, the shorter, is your negative. So what actually happens? According to our Coulomb's law, what is that? Uh, opposite poles attract or opposite charges attract each other. So this is an n-type electron uh, with a positive. So obviously, this n-type here should move in this direction, being attracted here. This uh, holes here being attracted here. If we close the switch, let's try to observe. The voltage sets up an electric field throughout the junction. And this junction is served to be reverse bias. Let's observe. Okay. Did you observe? They are repelling each other because this voltage here okay, attracts our electrons. The negative, the, the negative here attracts our p-type. Okay. Up until it creates a very big depletion layer. It is widened, and again, our depletion layer is a, an insulator. Therefore, a reverse bias P and junction does not allow current to flow. Okay, let's observe our forward bias. You have here again a P and junction, same position, P type, N type, and then you have your depletion layer. We apply a voltage. Earlier, we had here the longer area. So the positive is in this area, the negative here. But now, let's try to observe what happens to our PN junction if we have this positive side here and negative side here. Okay. Since this is a P-type, holds positive, you have here our positive side. So according to law of charges, if both charges are the same, so they're going to repel each other. So obviously, if you close the switch here, these holes here, we're going to move to this direction. Also here, negative, negative, they will going to repel. This will going to move from this direction. Okay, let's close the switch. And the junction is said to be forward bias. Let's observe. Okay, from this bear, okay, it moves now. And then what happens to our uh, electron and hole? If they combine, they disappear. So let's try to observe. Okay, and then they... Disappear at the junction electrons field holes, both disappear as they are no longer free for conduction. And thus, okay, they are replenished by external cells and allow the current to flow. This continues as long as external voltage is greater than the junction voltage 0 0.7. Okay, we have here the junction voltage 0 0.7. As long as this external voltage that we apply here is greater than 0 0.7, that's the conduction voltage of our PN junction for silicon, then our PN junction conducts, that is a forward bias. Okay, if you apply higher voltage, the electrons feel a greater force and move faster. The current will be greater and will look like this. OK. 
Okay? And the PN junction, basically, from our basic electronics, is what you call a diode. Okay? Okay, remember the position or the placement of our diodes? Okay? You have here the line. Line is negative. This side where your arrow flows, that is your positive. Okay? Okay. Then current flows from negative to positive. So you have here. Okay, that is our diode. Semiconductor diode. A semiconductor diode is a PN junction. Okay? If it is in reverse bias, it does not conduct. So for example, here, you have your negative terminal. You have here your resistor. And then you have here your lamp. Okay? Let's try to observe what happens to our lamp during a reverse bias. Okay? Okay. In a reverse bias, this negative here from our European junction, positive supply, it will go into a track. So basically the flow of your hose will be here. Flow of hose will be here. Therefore, this PN junction will be an insulator. It will not allow the flow of current. So therefore, our lamp is turned off. But in forward bias direction, forward bias from our positive side here, positive side here of our uh, battery, it will go into repel. Okay? Greater value than 0 0.7 of our supply, it will allow our diode to conduct. Therefore, it allows the flow of electricity. Therefore, our lamp lights up. Okay? A diode should always have a positive protective resistor in series as it can be damaged by a large current. Again, our resistor resists the flow of electricity. Okay? This one here in your color, the semiconductor diode. This one here in silver, that is your negative side of your electrode, of your diode. Therefore, it should be connected to the where? It should be connected to the negative terminal of your battery. Okay. The silver line drawn on one side of the diode represents the line in its symbol. This should be connected to the negative terminal for the diode to be forward biased. Diodes are used to change alternating current to direct current. Diodes are also used to prevent damage in a circuit by connecting a battery or a power supply the wrong way around. Therefore, it may act now as a switch. Okay.